What's up everyone, it's Kenji here and today I'm joined by AJ who's a CFA charter holder who also has a YouTube channel called Straight Talks so make sure you check it out. And we'll discuss the CFA designation short for the Chartered Financial Analyst. So we'll break this video down into four main parts. Firstly, we'll look at what the CFA is and what it covers. Secondly, we'll go over who should take it and whether it's going to help in your job hunt if you're in that situation. Thirdly, we'll go over the requirements and the costs. And then lastly, we'll get some studying advice from AJ who's managed to pass all three exams on the first try, which is something quite difficult to do. All right, let's get into it. So AJ, just starting off with the basics, what is the CFA? The CFA is an academic program. It stands for the Chartered Financial Analyst Program. It's hosted by an independent academic institute, the CFA Institute, and it's meant to set a standard by which investment professionals have to clear before they can they can earn those three letters. And the standards are primarily based around uh, academic knowledge base and ethical standards that they have to abide by in their practices in the financial industry. And it's widely considered kind of the gold standard in the investment industry across the entire globe. It's an international designation. As for the curriculum, it's split into three levels, very creatively named one, two, and three. And the questions will vary from multiple choice to essay-like questions as you move up the levels. Regarding the content covered, it consists of 10 different topics ranging from general subjects like economics and financial statement analysis to more specific ones like derivatives or alternative investments. Who would you suggest take the CFA? Is it for people already in the industry or those that are looking to enter it maybe? I think it's beneficial for both. Really, I tell folks if they have any interest in investment decision making related work now or in the future, the CFA can be beneficial but it's not always necessary. So I wouldn't tell everyone who works in finance to pursue the CFA because it's such a difficult program. It's not always gonna be worth it. And we've kind of talked about that in the past, but for folks who want to get positions in the investment related field and are not already there. So yeah, Kenji, like you asked about, you know, um, before people start working in the industry, yeah. for folks who are working in different fields, maybe engineering or medicine and are interested in stock trading and they wanna start working and investing, the CFA can be a great way to show hiring managers that they're serious about working in finance. Yep. And for those who have been working in finance already for five, 10, maybe even 20 years, and either want to put another feather in their cap to impress clients, or specifically, it can be helpful if you're trying to get into another role, get a promotion, either within your same firm or at another firm, working in an investment decision making related tasks, then the CFA uh, designation can be really helpful too. Would you say that even just having the level one, is that beneficial or you need to have all three levels for it to be something relevant? In general, I would say no, but just having the level one exam passed is not going to be all that helpful in career advancement, but in specific instances, it, it will be Kenji. Yeah. And you're going to have for it to be relevant. You'd have to be interviewing with someone who, in my opinion, is already a CFA charter holder and places a lot of value and has a lot of respect for anyone yeah. who has gone through even one level and is going through the next level, because they're going to say, hey, you've passed level one. You're serious about this. You're already studying for level two. Maybe if you're in that boat, someone who's not a CFA charter holder themselves, they're probably relatively familiar with the designation. But in most instances, I don't think they're going to place much weight on seeing that someone has passed just the level one exam. Yeah. You usually don't see significant pay raises. The CFA Institute does give out surveys to candidates and charter holders. And it's shown that there's on average a slight increase in pay after passing the level one exam, but it's typically not anything signif significant. And I don't think for the most part, people can springboard into promotions or into new companies just after passing the level one test. And I see that a lot of people seem to be debating between say an MBA, a, a master's in finance and the CFA. Do you, do you think those are comparable? And, and if so, how? In a lot of ways they are comparable but in some ways they're not. Uh, the main ways that they are comparable is that they are very prestigious academic designations. And specifically, if you were doing an MBA uh, related to investing or some other financial corporate decision-making, they might have a lot of overlap in content too. The CFA exams might have a, over, a lot of overlap in content with certain MBA programs. In my opinion, if you're in a top 10 to 20 MBA program, that's probably a better boost to your resume than being a CFA charter holder. But if you're going to a college that's kind of middle of the pack, uh, it's probably not as advantageous to you as if you were uh, to get the CFA charter. 
Now it, it might be a lot quicker because some NBA yeah. programs only take one year and the CFA program typically will take folks uh, three to four. And realistically, a lot of people spend more than that. Okay. But an MBA program costs a lot more money for yeah. the most part too, especially if you're in what I mentioned, you know, the top 10 to 20, the most prestigious MBA programs that can be very costly. And you can spend a lot of years paying back those student loans, whereas the CFA program is relatively far cheaper. So there are similarities. They can both boost your resume. There's going to be some overlapping content, but for things like asset management and wealth management, some hedge fund roles, I think for the most part, the CFA program is going to be looked upon uh, more highly. And in maybe like managerial corporate type roles, the content thought throughout MBA programs might be more helpful. AJ, when it comes to the actual content that you might learn in an MBA versus a CFA, do you think those are comparable? So Kenji, they are going to be pretty comparable. I have to say I haven't done an MBA program myself, so I can't say firsthand, but I do have a few friends who have done it. And I have taken two MBA level classes during my undergrad university studies. And in my opinion, the breadth of information, the amount of knowledge you'll learn throughout all three levels of the CFA program is going to be significantly more than an MBA program. There's just so much content. What you can get out of an MBA that you can't earn with the CFA charter or you can't experience with the CFA charter is doing really cool case analysis projects. So in a lot of, in a lot of MBA programs, you'll run real world case analysis on companies who are like contracting the business school that you're to have all their students work on something for one month or three months or some long period of time like that. And you'll run through a real world case that can be super interesting because sometimes they're not even like public knowledge and you are providing consulting services to a company or organization trying to make a major decision. Not to mention MBA programs are taught by real people, professors, yeah. and the CFA program is all self-study. So you could meet some really awesome professors and work on some really cool cases in an MBA program that you're just not going to get with the CFA. Can you walk us through the requirements to become a, a CFA charter holder? The requirements are really straightforward. They're just pass all three exams and have three years of investment decision-making related work experience. And when it comes to the finances, how much can you reasonably expect to spend on it? I guess it depends on things like if you hire a tutor and so on, but what, do you have an estimate? Sure. And you make a really good point, Kenji. First, I'll say if you are not hiring a tutor, because most CFA candidates don't hire a tutor, you typically will spend uh, 800 to 1200 US dollars to register for the exam. Um, actually, there's an initial sign up fee. I think that's three or 400 and then around 800 to 1000 or 1200 for each exam. And then I recommend folks also probably pay for a third party test prep provider. You can pay anywhere between a couple hundred bucks to maybe a thousand bucks per year for that. So on the high end. Earning the CFA charter is going to cost you six to eight thousand dollars, but a lot of candidates also get their exam costs uh, subsidized by their employers or covered completely, and that's the scenario I was in. So it didn't cost me a dime, which I'm pretty fortunate to be able to say. And when it comes to the actual exams, I mean they're notoriously hard. The pass rate is is, is pretty low; it's less, less than fifty percent for all exams. Can you walk us through how you actually went about passing all of them on the first try, which is something fairly uh, rare? Yeah, I do think that I have a really good formula for studying effectively for, making sure you study enough for, and then passing the CFA exams. And I've talked about that in the past. But to your point, Kenji, the pass rates are historically low right now. So I feel a little bit lucky because I was taking the exams five, four, and three years ago, and the pass rates were higher when I was doing it. Candidates doing these exams today, at least in the past 18 months, have had to hurdle some of the highest passing scores, actually the highest passing scores that the CFA program has, has ever had. So it's becoming more and more difficult. The most important factor in a candidate's ability to pass the exam is spending enough time studying. It's easy to not spend enough time studying since like I've talked about, it's a self-study program. You don't go to a class and there's no one giving you a quiz every three weeks. You are totally responsible for progressing through the material, learning it all, quizzing yourself, going back to the old material, making sure you're still familiar with all that. And then in the past, in the final four weeks or so, really preparing to be able to pass that exam. So I think a very useful tool is to count your hours. I did about um, 400 hours for level one, and then about 600 hours total study for levels two and level three. That's more than the average. The common notion is to do 300 hours of study for each CFA exam. I feel like that's not usually enough. And the candidates who are passing these exams, they're probably studying more than the average. 
since the average candidate fails. And so you really should be doing more than 300. So getting in enough hours, reviewing the content thoroughly and answering a ton of practice questions, making sure you're doing more mock exams in the final month, and uh, then specifically memorizing all the formulas that you're going to need to know for the exam. You know, I'm making it sound very easy, but if you do each of those five things really effectively, then the chance of passing in my mind goes to like 75% rather than, you know, 25% for a given exam for, uh, for the people who are checking all those boxes. And is it beneficial to already be working in the industry in terms of knowledge for the exam? If you're working at a bank, say, or at a wealth management firm? It can be slightly beneficial, especially in my opinion, if you're working in accounting, um, some of the more obscure topics that people who already work in finance have to learn when they enter the CFA program is around United States GAAP accounting standards and IFRS international accounting standards. So if you're already an accountant, you're going to have a leg up over other people. If you're already just working in general finance, you'll know some things that the exam uh, kind of gives us an introduction. And if you're not working in the finance field at all, I do think it is more difficult to fully prepare for the exam. It's not impossible. Tons of people do it who don't work in the finance field. Now, it's not like if you work in finance, you're going to know the answers to all the questions. It's just more like you'll have been relatively familiar with some of the terms and concepts that they introduce to you. You're still going to have to study the math and the, uh, the problem solving behind all those terms and concepts that go into the exam. Yeah. And just one, one final question. When it comes to students that are currently in university, do you think there's any particular coursework that would be beneficial for them towards the CFA? Yeah, that's a great question. I definitely believe there are a few classes you can take in university or undergrad college, um, as it's called in the United States, that can help you out if you're someone who's planning to take CFA level one. That is going to be as many accounting classes as you can, personal tax accounting, corporate tax accounting, uh, auditing, because there's a good amount of what the CFA program calls FRA, financial reporting and analysis. So the more accounting background you can get, is going to be extremely beneficial and not just for the CFA program. If anyone's watching this video and is working in finance, but probably isn't going to do the CFA accounting classes are, I think really beneficial to building a knowledge base for almost any role in the business industry and in any business, I should say outside of accounting. The next place I would lean to is economics. Uh, if you take uh, micro and macro economics courses, you're going to get a lot of introduction to many of the concepts that are covered throughout the economics, corporate finance, and equity sections of the CFA curriculum. So those can all be beneficial, yeah. Big thank you to AJ for making this video possible. Make sure you check out his channel for more on the CFA and other finance related topics. I'll leave it in the description. If you have any questions for me or for him, feel free to put them down in the comments. Hit that like, hit that subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next one.